Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day once again. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, Samuel, uh, can you please lead us in prayer? Okay, uh, Anita, uh, can you please lead us? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory, Radha. Thank you for this precious time, O oh Lord, Father, to come into your presence as your people, O oh Lord, Father, and to learn from your word, O oh Lord. Almighty, O oh Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, as we learn about, O oh Lord, Father, how to be a salt and light in this world, O oh Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, for the world is full of darkness, O oh Lord, Father. Almighty, O oh Lord, Father, help us, O oh Lord, Father, as your people in and through our lives, O oh Lord, Father, to glorify and magnify your name alone, O oh Lord, Father. Father, Lord Jesus, as pastor speaks unto us, O Lord, Father, all the words spoken, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, will penetrate our heart and mind, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, that we'll be able to imply every word, every teaching, O Lord, Father, in our lives, O Lord, Father. And, O Lord, Father, to O Lord, Father, which would help us, O Lord, Father, to consecrate and, O Lord, Father, to O Lord, Father, walk in the way, O Lord, Father, which you have chosen for us, O Lord. Father, Lord Jesus, empower us, O oh Lord, Father, for every, every word, O oh Lord, Father. We bless, Pastor, we bless every student here, O oh Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. Let our time in you, O oh Lord, Father, be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Anita. Okay. Uh, so, yesterday we uh, completed Chapter 10. Uh, we looked at planning and execution. Uh, so, Today, we, what we'll do is uh, we'll skip chapter 11, uh, and I just thought we'll go into uh, strategic partnership <clears throat> oh, Sorry, uh, in chapter 12. We'll talk about strategic <clears throat> partnership. And uh, now we are in a time where, you know, when we look at corporate settings, uh, uh, you know, it was there many, many years ago also. Uh, but now we see a lot of partnership happening from between different organizations and now with ministry growing and uh, uh, you know different many new ministries starting uh, there has been a lot of uh, you know ministries partnering together to fulfill uh, a purpose or a cause uh, uh, in in God's kingdom so uh, we look at today <clears throat> strategic partnership and what are the main aspects that are involved in strategic partnership? Now, we know that uh, partnership is good, right? What it does is uh, it's like two organizations bringing their strengths together and, you know, uh, planning, strategic planning, uh, and, and there is uh, uh, business objectives, leveraging of tools and technologies and all of that. Uh, so there's good strategic partnerships, but there's also partnerships that can cause diverse effects between which can you know just break the entire uh, organization uh now the bible teaches us about partnership in in many places right and so today we're going to look at you know what is strategic partnership now how do we translate this in ministry there are times when, when I have uh, read a few articles when you know, there were certain ministries that it happened in the West where they got together, three, four ministries, they got together, they decided to do a couple of conferences, you know, uh, so they, they would go to different states um, uh, in the West, right? They would go and travel as a team. And this happened, I think, in the early 1990s where uh, these ministries that had planned these events and after the whole uh, you know the whole set of events had happened and the, everything was over there was discord between the three ministries what happened was one of the ministries felt that they had been neglected the whole time right uh, and the other ministry felt that you know the per people who were looking after the money have somehow, not handle the money in the right way. And so by the end of that whole conference, which went on for about a month or so, 
these three ministries, instead of getting stronger together and doing something bigger for God's kingdom, the result was these three ministries were divided. There was confusion. There were arguments. There were misunderstandings. And things were not looking good. Right? So what do we learn from scriptures on strategic partnership? What is it that we must be aware of when we partner with people in an organization and in the ministry? And I would say that in the, if, if we are partnering with somebody in the ministry, we got to be doubly careful, right? So let's look at uh, certain relevant scriptures and uh, insights from the Bible and how we may consider entering into strategic partnership, right? So uh, I'm on chapter 12, strategic partnership. Let's go point by point and learn together, right? First point is an ox and a donkey cannot plow together. Uh, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 10. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 10. Deuteronomy 22.10, yes. Don't ahead. plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Yeah, thanks, Tarun. Don't plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Now, we know that an ox is much stronger, much capable physically, and it, 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 we know that an ox is meant for plowing. That, that's, that's what its strength is. However, it would be foolish to have a fork ox and a donkey because a donkey does not know how to plow a field donkeys don't have strength to carry a yoke on them uh, and one more thing what would happen is it would be like the ox is doing most of the work because the ox is stronger right and so more than the donkey helping the ox uh, the the donkey is only going to be an additional effort for the ox, right? Uh, I hope you get what I'm trying to say because the ox is probably, you know, thinking, okay, this is my compa compatibility. This is how fast I can go. This is my physical strength. But now it's yoked to the donkey. So it has to think and, you know, it can't just go ahead because the donkey is going to fall. And if the donkey trips and falls, the yoke is just going to topple over. Now, what is the simple lesson we learn here? That compatibility is crucial in partnership. If we are in certain level, in a certain level, in an organization, right, and the organization is a, is in a, is in a certain level, and if we want to partner with somebody else, it's always good to see if you are compatible with each other, in terms of culture in terms of strengths, in terms of expectations, commitments, right? Always check uh, whether, you know, if this partnership, is, is it is it going to look good once they hit the field, once they hit the plow? Or is it going to look like, hey, you know, it looks like these, the ox is going to do most of the work and this looks like it's like a donkey, which is not going to do much. Let's give it some time. Let's avoid uh, this partnership for a while. Now, in ministry, there have been times when, uh, or there will be times when people will come and say, hey, let's, uh, you know, other ministries will come, let's partner together and, you know, and do a couple of events in the city. Uh, and then, well, you know, after we do those events, whatever, uh, you know, uh, data we collect, we'll split the data into two, and uh, you take 50%, I'll take 50%. We'll begin to follow up with them and invite them to our respective churches. Now, this is a good idea, right? But if it is not properly planned, if it is not put down on paper, it is only going to be, you know, the, the outcome is going to be a problem. It's going to result in, uh, you know, probably discord, disagreements, and arguments. Why? Because I remember this one time, this happened in 
I think it was North India where uh, there were two ministries that got together. They said, okay, we'll go to Delhi. Uh, I'm not sure if it, I think it is Delhi. Yes. We go to Delhi. We'll do a couple of events and whatever we get data, we get, we will split it into two and we will start two churches in Delhi. So these were two different ministries coming together, planning events, split the data and, you know, uh, follow up. What happened was everything went well. The event went well. They got, uh, you know, of a lot of data and uh, names and numbers of a lot of people who attended the events. But then the time came for follow up to plant the church. What happened was one of those ministries all of a sudden started seeing many people coming into the church, right? So there was all of a sudden like 20, 25 people started to come. And the other ministry, there was only two, three people. Now, what happened was this other ministry felt, uh, you know, there was some tampering done on the data. None of them are coming. How come everyone are going to this church? And they both are in the same city, right? Uh, so partnership that is one-sided will usually not succeed, right? Uh, we got to be in one mind, in one heart, and understand that it's a teamwork, it's a team effort, and the whole outcome or the result of this teamwork is that we want to achieve this. When we have put all of that on paper, uh, and then we, we really sit, you know, we, we can't say, uh, the wrong thing to do is, okay, you do this uh, and you do this and then, uh, you know, by word of mouth and, and, and just try to go on, you know, even if it's ministry, you know, just try to ex execute those plans just through word of mouth. It will be an utter failure. Uh, remember that partnership is good, but there needs to be strategic partnership. Plan it out. Uh, place things on paper. Uh, have a team involved, like what we saw uh, uh, last class as well, planning and execution. Uh, have all of that in place, right? And then we will see that, you know, uh, uh, the, the planning is working. If, if things are working out, uh, always keep things clear, right? Uh, between, in, in, in partnership, keep things open. Let there be no, nothing hidden. Uh, everything should be in the open. Everything should be discussed uh, openly so that, you know, there is uh, uh, the partnership is in good terms at all times. Right? The second point is to know who you're dealing with. Dig deeper to get all facts. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 6. Yes, could one of us please read that? Proverbs 27 verse 6. Proverbs 27 verse 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy is enemy are deceitful. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinas. Right. So as, as I was saying, you, we cannot enter a strategic partnership with our eyes closed. We need to keep our eyes open. Yes, uh, you know, we need to have this level of trust, but we cannot say, okay, I trust you and I start the partnership. And we've, you know, when we look at uh, businesses across the world, many, many businesses have fallen apart just because maybe two brothers or two uh, good friends started a business. And then it's all, uh, you know, over the period of time, over the initial period, they're all, you know, close together. But then after that, there's division, there's disagreements, there's arguments. So, uh, Get past those, you know, initial smooth talks uh, and bring everything on the table, right? If you are planning on a partnership, it's a serious relationship. So it's not something that was, you know, okay, this so that somebody wants to be in a partnership. They say, okay, you know what, I can do this for you and I can... You know, if it's ministry, you know, I can help you. I can send worship leaders. I can send instruments. I can do this. I can do that. Uh you know, those are good, but then that's that's just smooth talks. It's it's not about uh, you know just providing in a partnership. It's about working together, right? Uh, sometimes, you know, in ministries, what we do is uh, we tend to take people by their word, 
and we realize that later on it becomes a problem say uh, you know hey uh, we had discussed this but uh, why is this happening this way uh, and nothing is on paper so there's nothing to back up the words no but you said this it's not going to work right uh, uh, because words change remember that god says that uh, the scriptures teach us that we are like shifting winds only god is the same people can change in a moment so it's always good now i'm not saying that everyone are like that what i'm trying to say is even if you completely trust somebody uh have things down on paper that would be the right way have some level of commitment have them to uh, you know say okay these are certain things that we will do together in that way you know that you know sometimes we feel hey how can i make a agreement with this person you know he's my best friend or, or he's my brother or he's my sister uh, i i know him so well he's not going to change his word uh, uh the wise thing to do is to make agreements proverbs 14:15 is wonderful it says the simple believes every word but the prudent considers well his steps so be prudent be be wise right it's always good to have things down on paper uh one of the other things you can do is if if ministries are uh wanting to partner or you want to partner with other ministries get to know about them right do a little bit of research find out go on online if they are available online check what are their beliefs what are their values what are their culture what are uh, what are the things that they uh, believe in how's their uh, process of working get inputs get ideas get get to know the organization don't just blindly you know partner with somebody right uh third point is evaluate work before saying i do let's read proverbs chapter 1 verses 10 to 15 proverbs 1 10 to yes go ahead proverbs 1 10 to 15 proverbs 1 10 to 15 my son if sinners and entice you do not consent if they say come with us let us lie in wait to shed blood let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause let us swallow them alive like sheol and a uh, hole like those who go down to the pit we shall find all kinds of precious possessions we shall fill our houses with spoil cast in your lot among us let us all have one purse my son do not walk in the way with them keep your foot from their path yes thank you tarun <clears throat> now here it's is very interesting it says here uh, uh let us follow them alive like sure and whole like those who go down to the we shall find all kinds of precious possessions we shall fill our houses with spoil cast in your lot among us let us all have one purse now what the writer here is trying to say is you know don't to in a in a whole way of achieving profit or okay the end result is this is what i want to do i want to have this kind of a profit or i want to see the ministry growing this way i want to see hundreds of people joining and and these are the different things i want to see in the ministry now just because the outcome is something that we want as as profitable or an increase in the organization to achieve that we must make sure that in strategic partnership the other organization or ministry is not using unscrupulous uh, methods or approaches to you know actually uh, uh, reach their targets right so it could be all kinds of methods people may uh, use bribery right um, to you know to achieve their targets they may bribe people um, and a uh, wrong means to achieve profit now the best thing to do is to stay away from it refuse such partnerships right refuse it on their face you can just refuse it and say i don't want to do this because this is the reason these are the things as as an organization and as a ministry these are certain values and culture we follow and and it looks like there are certain our values are not 
in line together. So we don't want to do partnership. Now, here's the thing. People will talk. You know, they may get upset. They may say, you know, they may not talk to us again. Or they may talk behind our back. They may uh, never speak to us again. Don't worry about it. Remember that you are protecting what God has given you. Right? Uh, now, remember this one time. Uh, I'm just trying to bring out this example just to, you know, to know how important it is to not get into partnerships or, uh, you know, in, in, in ministry and things like that. There's this one time in church, uh, you know, it was a regular Sunday, probably just 2019 or it was a regular Sunday. Now, uh, there's this young family that came to church, right? And uh, they were first time uh, in church. And after coming to church, uh, they sat through the church. After church, we got to speak. Uh, and I got to know that he was a pastor in a different place. And uh, after talking to him for a long time, he said, I've come to this city to start a new church. Uh, and, uh, you know, I want to start a new church here. I want to know how the people are. What is the culture? So I'm just sharing with him how people are. Um, what's the culture, the language, and uh, what you can expect in the city. Uh, but as I was talking, I just felt the Holy Spirit, you know, putting this nudge in me. Why did he close down the other church? Or why was he asked to leave the other church? We don't know. So I, I just kept thinking about it. And, and so I asked him, oh, what about the church that you started in the other city? No, there was a problem and we had to close it down. I said, okay. So I didn't want to dig deep, but then... As I was talking to him, I just felt that there was something. I, I didn't, you know, sometimes we feel this connect when we, uh, when we talk to believers together. Uh, and, and we feel this connect, right? Uh, the Holy Spirit really brings that connection with each other. But I didn't feel it at all. Even though he was a pastor, I was trying hard to, you know, really understand where he's coming from. But I could not, right? Um, and then as we were talking, he... He started saying, you know, uh, why don't we partner together and uh, do a couple of events here? Um, uh, and I will pay for all the expenses for the events. We can take up a hall. Uh, we'll use, you, you know, you can ask your worship team to come and pray, play some songs and we'll, I will preach. And everything sounded good. But I realized as I was talking to him, the Holy Spirit was clearly saying, avoid this very sternly, right? avoid this, say no to him. So what I rarely do is, uh, you know, I immediately don't say no to people. I say, let's think about it and I'll get back to you. But that Sunday, I said, no, uh, no, we, we don't, I don't want to do that. And he was taken aback. Uh, he said, uh, why you don't want to build God's kingdom together? You know, we can work together and build God's kingdom. Uh, you can't work alone. What does God's word say? You know, he started bringing out scripture and all of it. Uh, but I held my foot down and I said, no, I don't want to do this. Uh, you're free to come to church. You're free to, uh, you know, visit us whenever you want. But I don't feel that we can partner together and do anything here in the city of Mangalore. So, but if you need any help, if you want to, uh, looking out for a place, you need any help, you need instruments, I can help you with that, but uh, not partnering. And he was very upset with me. Uh, you know, he came the next Sunday, but he was visibly upset. He said uh, uh, he was not, uh, you know, he was not letting go of that idea. He kept saying this, uh, you know, you can, we can do this, you know. Uh, and then later on, one member from my ch from our church uh, came up to me and said uh, pastor you know uh, i i just want to advise you to stay away from this man because um there are things that we know about this person uh, previously and uh, uh you know uh, they as as my church members they they warned me they said try to stay away from him try not to have anything to do with him um so i was glad that i said no initially Right? So there are some partnerships or sometimes people will come and, you know, they'll have good words. Everything sounded nice. I'll pay for the hall. I'll pay for the refreshments. 
uh, we'll just have to you'll just have to get your worship team and come and we'll do everything uh, I, I I thought I, maybe I, I could have thought okay sounds good we can do something together but I just felt no so there are times when the Holy Spirit will say no right don't be afraid to say no right don't feel okay he's a pastor how can I say no uh, no don't be afraid uh, if the Holy Spirit is leading us to say no, just say no. It's all right, right? It's to protect what you have. Uh, you know, there's this saying, uh, what you have taken many years to nurture and build, don't let somebody else come in and destroy it in just a few, a few in a moment, right? Uh, it can get destroyed. So be wise, right? Even as we, uh, you know, plan to partner together before saying okay before signing uh, before agreeing think about it pray about it see whether it's the right means uh, whether whether they are compatible and all of that next one check alignment of culture and values now we did study about culture and values initially uh and we understand that different organizations have different cultures, different values. It may not be exactly the same. Uh, but we must understand that partnership is like making two families live under one roof, right? It's like two homes becoming one. Let's read S Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 15. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 15. I'll read. <clears throat> Cut Let's go ahead. Boxes. Go ahead. Catch at the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. For our vines have tender grapes. Amen. Thank you, Kennedy. Mark 3, 24, 25 says, If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. Now, foxes are known for one thing. They're known to be cunning animals, right? Uh, they're known uh, to be very cunning, very wise uh, in their ways. Uh, but I'm not talking about the good wise, but they're very cunning. Uh, you know, these little foxes can spoil the vine and destroy the entire vine field, right? Because they are so cunning. They know how to go in. They know how to, you know, s in small ways, slowly uh, get the whole whatever the grapes that they need. And we, if we don't look at those little foxes and get them out, what happens is little by little, the fox keeps eating all the grapes. And by the end of when harvest time comes, imagine the farmer or the, uh, the wine dresser going and saying, okay, it's time to, uh, you know, uh, uh, get the harvest done. And imagine this wine dresser goes and sees there's, there is no grapes. 50% of it is gone. What's happened? I was looking after it all the while. But there's this fox that's been coming in in a very subtle way, eating little by little by little. And the fox knows I can't eat the whole thing at once, one time. I'm going to get caught. So I'll eat little, go. I'll come back another day, eat little. Very cunning, very smart. Now, when we are planning to work in partnership we must align our values we must you know see okay this organization or this ministry what are the values they stand for do they are they okay with you know people who drink are they okay with what are their belief systems what is the culture that they have is it okay to for everyone to just talk abusive language, use bad words every now and then? Or is it okay for them to, uh, you know, use money that has come into the ministry to for their own personal needs, meaning uh, apart from what they are been paid? 
what what is the values what is the culture now if we do not look at all of that what will happen is we are getting our hands tied up with an organization that is not aligned with our values now what's going to happen if anything wrong happens it's not going to be we cannot say because of that organization because i partnered with them uh, that's why you know my name is gone wrong you know i had a good name all this while but because of them no it is our fault it is our responsibility we must take responsibility for that so check alignment of culture and values right now uh, how do we check good good way to check is to initially have like a probation period work with them see how they are before signing a contract or a partnership see how look at small projects look at how the organization works how is their team do they work as a team is it like dictatorship right uh, now a lot of ministries at times we have pastors and great leaders you know this dictatorship they, the pastor will tell and the others will have to do it right uh, uh, there's no there's no team effort there's no uh, planning together it's just one person now we must we must look at all those things a house divided by itself is not going to stand if you have two organizations partnered and then after getting together you know realize that hey this is the biggest mistake i've done a house that is divided in itself will not stand for a long time it's going to fall down right uh, so check alignment see whether this is something that you have to do right agreement is important put everything in writing right let's read amos 33 i'll read that can two walk together unless they are agreed now i think the biggest problem that many ministries uh, i'm just going to focus a little bit on the ministry side is they don't have things in writing when even if you look at in a broader sense when you look at persecution happening especially in our nation the nation of india and in the smaller rural areas we see a lot of churches being attacked and all of it now it is sad that you know uh, christians are being persecuted and attacked but after digging deep we notice that a lot of times it is even our fault right it's even our fault why i'll tell you i'll tell you why now there are many churches which has started many years back right but they have no you know they haven't opened a uh, religious you know uh, they haven't opened that whole they've not gone through the legal procedure right they haven't uh, you know uh, done all the paperwork well they haven't put down the objectives of the ministry and all of that and so another another reason would be uh you know there are times when uh you know certain places the ministries have uh, are in you know located in or the house or the church is located near houses and you know there's loud uh, prayers and worship going on uh and there has been you know people who come and said you know what is this what's happening show us your Uh, you know your documents who who gave you the authority to have this prayer and many times especially in rural uh, areas 9 out of 10 times the ministry is not a registered organization right? there's no paperwork no i started this in 1992 it doesn't matter right what started in 1992 and you know 20 years later 30 years later you still have no paperwork what can we what can we fight against right it's still an unregistered organization and so sometimes we say okay this is persecution i would say that we need to keep our side of the you know our side right so we say okay we need to have our paperwork ready we need to show if people come say, say we have 
we have all the papers we have all the proof uh, that we have all the documents required uh, that we as, are an organization and we are allowed to have prayers on Sundays and also on other days. Now, from your side, you've done your part. Now, apart from that, there will be persecution, right? But at least in some, you know, in one way, you have done your part, right? Uh, I remember this, there's a small town a little away from Mangalore. Uh, it's a town called uh, Manipal. Uh, it has a lot of student community. Uh, but it also got a lot of villages uh, across in that small town. You just it, it just keeps going deeper in. You get a lot of villages. And so recently, this was just maybe about eight months back, uh, a group of people came and barged into this prayer center, destroyed the chairs, destroyed the tables, did everything. And it was, you know, uh, put on the uh, local television as well. And it all came in as... Christian persecution and you know these people are converting uh, believer converting and you know causing all this problem but then after that whole thing happened this pastor sat for an interview with uh, uh, with another man like, uh, uh, like somebody who was in the media interviewed this person and he started explaining no we were having prayer like this and then they came and they, uh, so the interviewer asked the pastor, uh, don't you have the documents to prove that you're an organization? So he said, no, we are, we, uh, oh, everyone know us here. So they know that we are Christians. They know that we have prayer. But the, the interviewer said, so then you don't have any documents. No. And two, what about the speakers and all of that? Uh, you know, uh, you do you keep it? You understand that this is a house uh, residential area. Um, do you need such big speakers and all of it? Uh, and he said yes because there are many people in the church, so we need it. Uh, it's a prayer center and all of it. And then the interview went on after that. They used to have six a.m. prayers, worship and prayers with all the speakers on in a residential area to they would have friday whole night prayers all the speakers on in a residential area so what is what is happening we are drawing attention one we are disturbing the people around us and we can't say uh, you know uh, this is all a demonic area so when we worship everything will go away we can't say all those things Right, And so the whole interview went on. And the end of the interview, the, 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 whole, the person who was you know, interviewing the pastor said, I don't think what has happened is wrong because you don't have any proof of what you're doing. And the, and the interview just ended that way. Of course, it was in a regional language, but it just ended that way. And it was sad to... You know, see the pastor you know, uh, and the chairs broken and the things, equipment broken. But whose fault is it? Is it only persecution? Is it only them or is it even our fault? Now, when you think deep, it's even our fault. Right? We didn't do the paperwork. We didn't use wisdom in how to deal with, you know, doing things. Right? We must understand what we're doing, going to do, right? Where we are. We use wisdom uh, in ministry, right? So arriving at mutual understanding is very important. Agreement is important. Writing it down on paper is extremely important. Agreeing just by words is not enough. You have to have everything documented. You know, one of the things we do in APC is, uh, you know, even as a team, we are working together together. Sometimes we make calls uh, and plans are made over the telephone, over WhatsApp. But after that, we always, always send an official email. Why do we do that? Because we want to document everything. So we say, okay, we dis we, this is what we spoke over the phone. This is what was discussed. These are the th plans that we've decided. These are the ways to go ahead in the next week. 
everything is put down on an email so that you know it can always be checked right now does it mean that i don't trust anybody or they don't trust me in the team not so the right way to do it is put everything in writing okay uh so this is a very important lesson uh in ministry uh you know some of us are young you may be planning to start ministry with your friends or with uh with your family members have everything put down on paper right never go by word right people will change but when you have it on paper everything you're keeping yourself safe right build businesses and partnerships steadily right it takes time to build it it, it takes time to you know build something from scratch now partnership is just made don't let don't say hey where's the profit we partner together no profit here now it takes time work steadily work cautiously be patient and then we will see uh, uh you know an outcome uh, uh in the coming days and years uh get all on board to work in partnership right uh, let's read this uh, portion of scripture genesis chapter 13 was 1 to 7 genesis 13 1 to 7 yes could one of us please read that Genesis 13:1 to 7 Abram went north out of Egypt to the southern part of Canaan with his wife and everything he owned and and Lot went with him Abram was a very rich man with sheep goats and cattle as well as silver and gold then he left there and moved from place to place going toward bethel he reached the place between bethel and ai where he had camped before and had built an altar there he worshiped the lord lot also had sheep goats and cattle as well as his own family and servants and so there was not enough pasture land for the two of them to stay together because they had too many animals so quarrels broke out between the men who took care of abram's animals and those who took care of lot's animals at that time the canaanites and the per- perizzites were still living in the land yeah. thanks sarun so here's an interesting uh, sequence of event that happened abraham and lot right now god had already blessed both of them both of them had a lot of servants a lot of livestock and so they decided we are going to go north they both journeyed together and as they were going uh they both probably were eager to reach the destination both were strong both were successful both had uh you know a uh, lot of uh, livestock and of course workers and servants and all of that but the bible it, it says here in this passage that on the way there was confusion they could not get along what happened Abraham's livestock or Abraham's servants and livestock and Lot's servants and livestock there was a clash right uh and so they said hey we don't have any place for pass for you know grazing uh and now it probably uh lord is saying only your animals and your livestock is getting all the uh you know uh, uh all the food for the animals and we don't have anything and those misunderstandings now we see what happened was after that if you if you go on later on they went their different paths strategic biz- partnership is not just about senior leaders getting together it is two organizations or two teams doing to get doing things together so we must understand that we have to get people involved in partnership right yes the 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 deal or the partnership deal may be signed by two single individuals that is the leaders of the organization or the ministry but just because they, they the leaders have signed it doesn't mean that the team don't do anything uh as leaders we must get everybody involved and next chapter we'll talk about leadership and there's so much to learn on leadership as well so uh get all of them involved and i say all of them 
who you feel as a leader can can you know really do something uh, can make a difference in this whole partnership that is happening get them involved i remember apc uh, uh yeah, i think it was 2016 we uh, we were doing something called as the power to change campaign uh, it was a campaign that was being done all across i think it was globally as well uh, and so we partnered with uh, this whole power to change campaign and uh, all of us were on board you know the it team the uh, pastoral team the member care teams the volunteers the life group leaders we all were on board we all were okay so if we get contacts from the uh, you know from the power to change team the data would come in through a software the it team had handled that the software we log into the software we take the data and then uh, as leaders we call up uh, the people and then the life group leaders will uh, you know uh, connect with those around that area and then eventually try and get them to uh, be connected to the life group and if they're not attending a church get them involved with it to the church. So it was this whole hierarchy. Everyone was involved. Uh, there was women who were involved, who were only uh, you know, doing counseling for many girls who had called, who were feeling suicidal and you know, who, who, were, who lost their parents, who were lonely. Uh, many girls who had uh, gone into prostitution and they had no way to come out of it. And they were uh, sad uh, and stuck. And they had called up and uh, it was a wonderful opportunity for a lot of our church members to you know really pray for them and minister to them so it was not like just leaders doing all the work the and everyone were on board right and when you do that we'll see that you know we, we feel a sense of accomplishment okay we did something together right now there will be times when we have to let go when we have to right genesis 13 8 and 9 I'll read that. Then Abraham said to Lot, We are relatives, and your men and my men shouldn't be quarreling. So let's separate. Choose any part of the land you want. You go one way, and I'll go the other way. Very important lesson learned here. Not all strategic partnerships will succeed. Now, when you know that things are not going you know, uh, as, de as planned, as decided, part ways before it gets worse. Abraham did the wisest thing here. He said, we are family. If we are together like this and quarreling together, it's just going to get worse. Let us part ways. You go the other way. You go one way and I'll choose the other way. Very, very wise. Do this soon enough before the ship sinks. There is nothing wrong in, you know, uh, just parting ways if you think things are not working out. Right? And finally, resolve disputes uh, peacefully wherever possible, right? Uh, Proverbs 25, 8 to 10 talks about don't go hastily to the court uh, uh, and put your neighbor to shame, which means when there are disputes, when there are, uh, you know, misunderstandings within a partnership, don't immediately take it to the court, but see if you can resolve those disputes peacefully um, in ministry as well. See if r r disputes can be resolved peacefully. And if it is possible, just resolve it, move on, right? Um, don't hold grudges, don't hold on to, you know, he did this and, and this was a problem, I shouldn't have done this. Uh, resolve a conflict and it's peacefully closed, move on. Uh, don't open that chapter again, right? Uh, and so we end with this chapter, uh, just a, f a lot of practical insights uh, that we can gain here. Next week, we'll start on leadership. Uh, uh, the next chapter is leadership, and uh, there's so much to learn on leadership. So we'll start next week. Any any questions, any thoughts? OK, uh, just a reminder, uh, the midterm assessment is up. So I uh, request you to begin to work on that and post it before uh, the due date mentioned. All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, Christopher, is it okay if you can please close? Okay, oh, anybody else? Uh, Prabhakar? Oh, yes, Pastor. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we acknowledge your holy name. At this moment, we come into your throne of praise, Father. 
Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity and this wonderful class which you have led in us. Father, thank you for the life of Pastor Paul as well, uh, and thank you for teaching us to all this marvelous ministry, Father. I dedicate and decree uh, all the peoples uh, in this classroom uh, for leading us through your Holy Spirit and wisdom. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful time. Mm -hmm. I can dedicate all and uh, every uh, life aspects to be um, walk into your. Uh, divine dedication and father divine uh, planning according to your will we shall um, lead our lives to father we shall build our lives to father thank you and i ask this prayer in the name of our lord jesus christ amen 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 thank you prabhaka thank you everyone have a great day a uh, great week god bless thank you pastor amen. thank you pastor god bless god bless